To King. Chapter One. The Secret of Tao. The speakable Tao is not the eternal Tao. The mentionable name is not the eternal name. The nameless is the beginning of heaven and earth. The named is the mother of the myriad beings. And so, constant non-desire views the most secret. Constant desire views only the limited. These two are of a common origin and differ only in name. In their one being, they are a mystery. The mystery's still deeper mystery is the gateway to all mysteries. Two, the emergence of opposites. When everyone knows Beauty is beautiful. Then ugliness is already there. When everyone knows goodness is good, then evil is already there. For being and non-being create one another. Difficult and easy determine one another. Long and short measure one another. High and low define one another. Sound and voice complement one another. Before and after follow one another. And so the wise one he dwells during activity in non-action and lives the wordless teaching. The myriad beings appear and he does not evade them. He neither creates nor possesses. He acts and remains unattached. When the work is done, he does not linger. Indeed, only as he does not linger, does he lose nothing. Three, contentment through desirelessness. Not praising the worthy avoids contention among men. Not cherishing goods hard to obtain avoids theft among men. Not regarding what can be desired avoids men's hearts to be restive. And so the wise one rules thus. He empties their hearts, steadies their center, weakens their desires, and strengthens their character. He constantly leaves the nation without knowledge, without desires, and causes that the wise acres do not dare to interfere. He dwells during activity in non-action, and so everything becomes arranged by itself. The Omnipresence of the Tao Tao is empty, but in its action 
inexhaustible. A chasm indeed, it appears as the origin of the myriad beings. It softens zealousness, untangles confusions, mildens glory, and unites with the dust. Concealed it is, but constantly present. I do not know whence it comes. It seems to precede even heaven. Five, inexhaustible void. Heaven and earth know no preference. To them are the myriad beings, like sacrificial straw dogs. The wise one knows no preference. To him are the people, like sacrificial straw dogs. The space between heaven and earth, is it not comparable to a bellows? Empty, but inexhaustible. The more it is moved, the more comes forth. Many words melt quickly away. How much better to preserve the essence. Six, the valley spirit. The spirit of the valley is immortal. It is called the dark feminine. The gateway of the dark feminine. It is the origin of heaven and earth. Eternally lasting, omnipresent, acting without effort. Seven, selflessness. Heaven endures eternally. Earth persists. Heaven and earth can therefore eternally endure and persist as they do not exist for their own sake. Hence, they may eternally endure and persist. And so the wise one, he puts his self last and he progresses forth. He divests himself of his self and thus remains preserved himself. Is it not so, since he is without self-interest? And so his innermost achieves completeness. Eight, Taoist values. Supreme goodness is akin to water. Water is good. It aids the myriad beings and does not quarrel. It inhabits the lowest, which all men despise. Therefore, it is close to the Tao. In dwelling is good, the right base. In thinking is good, the profoundness. In giving is good, the love. In speaking is good, the truth. In ruling is good, the order. In acting is good, the ability. In dealing is good, the timeliness. But only he who, like water, does not quarrel, remains sacrosanct through this. Nine, baneful immoderation. To overfill the chalice, better one would desist. To oversharpen the knife can surely not hold for long. 
is the hall filled with gold and jewels, then no one can watch over them. Rich, honoured, and arrogant besides, creates its own misfortune. To complete the undertaking, to withdraw oneself, thus is the heavenly way. Ten. Mystical Immersion Can you unite the powers of your soul, embrace the one, and in so doing be undivided? Can you gather the force of your breath, achieve softness, and in so doing be as a child? Can you cleanse and sublimate your inner view, and in so doing be without misapprehension? Can you love the people, rule the land, and remain thereby in non-action? Can you be like a mother bird when the gates of heaven open and close? Can you grasp everything with radiant clarity and remain thereby without knowledge? Create this. Nourish this. Creating but not possessing. Acting but not attaching. Protecting but not dominating. This is called profound spiritual force. Eleven, the usefulness of the non-existent. Thirty spokes surround a knave. Precisely there, where nothing is, lies the wheel's usefulness. One shapes clay to form a pot. Precisely there, where nothing is, lies the pot's usefulness. One chisels out both door and window, so that a house emerges. Precisely there, where nothing is, lies the house's usefulness. And so, that which is of essence, shows its value whilst in use, only through that which is without essence. Twelve, external temptation. Resplendent colours blind the human eye. Exuberant sounds deafen the human ear. Gourmet tastes dull the human mouth. Hastening and hounding unsettle the human heart. Goods hard to obtain confound the human condition. And so the wise one, he provides for the inner and not for the outer. He relinquishes the one and grasps the other. Thirteen, ego free. Favor and disfavor both are to be feared. Honor is great suffering like the self. What does it mean? Favor and disfavor, both are to be feared. Favor is something lowly. To gain it is to be feared. To lose it is to be feared. That means favor and disfavor, both are to be feared. What does it mean? Honor is great suffering like the self. That we are plagued by great suffering is since we still possess a self. Were we, however, to achieve selflessness, would we not also be free from suffering? And so, whoever treasures the world as he does himself, to him may surely the world be entrusted. 
Whoever loves and treats the world as he does himself, to him may the world be left. Fourteen. Unfathomable Tao. One looks for it and sees it not. It is called invisible. One listens for it and hears it not. It is called inaudible. One reaches for it and grasps it not. It is called intangible. These three, not examinable through reasoning, interwoven with one another, they are one. Its upper is not light, its lower is not dark. Ceaselessly onwards it flows, endless, nameless, and returns to the beingless. That is, of the formless form, of the imageless image. That is, the most unfathomable of the unfathomable. One approaches it and sees not its beginning. One follows it and sees not its end. When the Tao of the forefathers is preserved to guide the essence of today, from time immortal, one can know. This is called endless unfolding of the Tao. Fifteen, the masters of old. The veritable masters of old were subtle, arcane, and profound. Concealed they were, and inscrutable. Since inscrutable, I can describe them only with difficulty. Heedful they were, like he who crosses a river in winter. Cautious, like he who fears the surrounding neighbours. Reticent, like a visiting guest. Yielding, like melting ice. Simple, like unhewn wood. Far-reaching, like the valley. Inscrutable, like turbid water. Who can, through tranquillity, gradually clear the turbidness? Who can, through motion, gradually enliven the tranquillity. He who preserves this Tao does not seek other plenitude. But only he who does not seek other plenitude cannot be blinded by innovation. He can be lowly and attain completeness. Sixteen. Perceiving the Eternal Reach the utmost emptiness. Enshrine the steadfast silence. The countless forms unfold, but I watch how they turn back again. The beings blossom, resplendent and colourful, but return home to the basal root. Returning to the root means stillness. Stillness means returning to destiny. Returning to destiny means eternity. Perceiving the eternal means enlightenment. Non-perception of the eternal, however, brings baneful disarray. He who perceives the eternal is all-embracing. The all-embracing one is righteous unto all. The righteous one is regal. The regal one is of heavenly kind. The heavenly one is united with the Tao. He who is united with Tao can eternally abide. When the body wanes, he remains without peril. 
17. Hidden Ruler Of a great ruler, the people only know he exists. A less greater they love and praise. A still less greater they fear. A still less greater they despise. He who does not trust enough cannot be trusted. The true ruler brings forth few words. Is his work complete, the deed accomplished? The people say, it happened as if by itself. Eighteen, the loss of Tao. When the great Tao goes adrift, benefaction and rectitude arise. When knowledge and cleverness appear, great hypocrisy follows. When the family harmony shatters, filial duty and parental devotion arise. Is the land caught in confusion? There are always the faithful public servants. Nineteen. Return to simplicity. Give up sanctity. Throw off cleverness. And the people will gain a hundredfold. Give up benefaction. Throw off rectitude. And the people will find natural love. Give up cunningness. Throw off avarice. And no more will there be robbers and thieves. These three are but pleasant illusion, and so can never be sufficient. And so, preserve purity, manifest simplicity, diminish selfishness, abate avidity. Twenty, different from the others, He who ceases all learning has no troubles. The hesitant yes and the willing yes. Is there a difference? But good and evil, is there no difference? What others esteem, that too I should honour. What nonsense! Oh, what confusion in this world and without end! People are all so joyous, as when celebrating great festivals, as when climbing the terraces in spring. I alone remain silent and unmoved, like a newborn child who has yet to laugh, unattached, independent. The masses have their opulence. Only I alone seem to possess nothing, my heart is that of a fool's, shrouded, inscrutable. People are all so bright and clear. Only I am turbid and dark. People are all so clever and astute. Only I am foolish and simple-minded. I drift along like the sea, without direction like the restless wind. People all have a purpose. Only I am a useless fool. I alone am different from the others, but I revere the nourishing mother. Twenty-one. The Origin of All Things the motion of highest spiritual force only ever follows the Tao. The action of the Tao, so intangible, so eluding. Eluding, intangible, it embodies all images. Intangible, eluding, it embodies all forms. Dark, unfathomable, it embodies the life force. 
The life force is reality, its innermost, highest certitude. From the very beginning till today, its name does not wane. It engenders the origination of all things. How I know of the origination of all things? Indeed, through this, the Tao. Twenty-two, Harmonic Balance The imperfect becomes perfect. The twisted becomes straight. The unfilled becomes filled. The old becomes new. The little becomes much. Too much brings confusion. And so the wise one, embracing the one, he becomes an example to the world. He does not flaunt himself, thus he shines. He does not assert himself, thus he is respected. He does not praise himself, thus he has merit. He does not elevate himself, thus he stands out. Since he does not quarrel, no one can quarrel with him. Like the elders did proclaim, the imperfect becomes perfect. And are those empty words? All flows to him who is truly sublime. 23. Becoming one with Tao. Sparsity of speech is in accordance with nature. A hurricane does not last a whole morning. A downpour does not last a whole day. But who brings forth wind and rain? Heaven and earth. But if heaven and earth are unable to provide permanence, how much less then can man. And so, he who follows the Tao will become one with the Tao. He who follows the highest spiritual force will become one with the highest spiritual force. He who has lost it will become one with his loss. He at one with the Tao will be willingly embraced by the Tao. He at one with the highest spiritual force will be willingly embraced by the highest spiritual force. He at one with its loss will be willingly embraced by the loss. He who does not trust enough cannot be trusted. 24. Craving for Recognition He who stands on tiptoe does not stand firmly. He who walks splay-legged makes no progress. He who flaunts himself does not shine. He who asserts himself is not respected. He who praises himself has no merit. He who elevates himself does not stand out. From the perspective of the Tao, this is called refuse and abnormal outgrowths, and this arouses repugnance in all beings. And so, he who follows the Tao does not behave so. 25. Intangible Tao There is a being, intangible, sublime. It precedes heaven and earth, so silent, so formless, alone in itself, unchanging, 
all-pervading, ever-present. It can be called the Mother of the Universe. I do not know its name. I call it Tao. When I strive to define it, I call it Great. Great, that is, eternally flowing. Eternally flowing, that is, endless vastness. Endless vastness, that is, ceaselessly returning. And so, great is Tao. Great is heaven. Great is earth. Great, too, is the majestical. Four grandeurs there are in the world. The majestical is one of them. Man follows the earth. The earth follows heaven. Heaven follows the Tao. The Tao follows itself. <laughs>